sermon series. Thank you so much. Uh, a couple weeks ago called um, Count Me In. He's a mess. Count me in. Count me in. How many of you can say to the Lord today, count me in. Count me in. You want to be all in for Christ. Come on, I got to wake you up this morning. And this morning you're at count me in, Pastor Dana. I'm here and you want to praise the Lord for who he is. We're going to be looking at Acts chapter 28, verse 1 through 6. Acts chapter 28, verse 1 through 6 this morning. Uh, how many of you just want to say God's been good all the time? He is good. Amen. Here we go. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. And the islanders showed us unusual kindness. And they built a fire and welcomed all, us all because it was rainy and cold. And Paul gathered a pile of brushwood. And as he put it on the fire, a bed old viper, come on, driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. Can you imagine? Holy smokes. And when the islander saw the snake hanging from his head, and from his hand, yeah, his head too, they said to, I only preach for a living, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess justice has now allow, not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. And the people expected him to swell up or to suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a God. The uh, title of my message today is Shake It Off. The title of my message today is Shake It Off. Look at your neighbor and say, you better shake that mess off today. Maybe that's what brought you in this place. Because you need some help. Because you got some things going on in your life. I don't know what kind of viper has bit you this week. I don't know what kind of situation has come out of nowhere. I don't know what you carried in here. But my prayer is that you would leave it to God before you walk out the door. Amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that whatever has bitten us, whatever has tried to stop us, whatever we have been through, Whatever setbacks, whatever difficulties, whatever people have been placed in our life, glory be to God, that are difficult, Lord, we ask that we would shake it off right now, God. Lord, we want to say to you, count us in, Lord, we want to be all in for you, Lord. And we can't do that if we keep allowing things to bite us and hold us back. So the one that's been bitten, the one who feels beaten down today, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would show up and you would show off today. Lord, this is your service, not Pastor Dana's service, not Tom's service, not Shirley's service, not, not Joe's service. God, this is your service. And so today, God, we don't want nothing. We don't want nothing that nobody said to us, nothing that we've gone through. We don't want our past. We don't want our present. We don't want anything that's going to hold us back. So today, Lord, we want to shake it off, and we want to invite you in that situation. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, about a week ago, I was walking outside around the church, and uh, I'm the kind of person that when I'm doing something, I'm going full tilt. And in case you haven't noticed. And so I was like walking around and I was like, you know, talking to myself in my mind what I had to do. And I'm like, okay, I got this, you know. And I had my worship music. I always have, I always have worship music or some kind of music. Most of the time it's 80s. But I have some kind of something going on in my back pocket on my phone everywhere I go. Ask my kids. They wake up in the morning, especially Jenna right now. She's like, Mom, can you turn your music off? I had music blaring when, I'm, when she first wake up and, and she's like looking at me like I'm crazy but that's what I was doing I was walking and I was coming in the back door to the church right there and I was walking and I just had that feeling like that song back in the 80s I always feel like somebody's watching me come on Leslie and no privacy oh anyway so I'm like something's somebody's watching me so I'm just like, okay, whatever, it's in my mind. So I'm walking, I'm jamming, and about that time, I see something move in the corner of my eye, and there was the biggest snake you have ever seen in your life. 
I'm going to tell you something. That thing might have watched me for a minute, but I was gone in no time. You talking about a pastor had the Holy Ghost presence all over her in the parking lot. I took off running. I was gone like Forrest Gump. I mean, I just kept running and running. and running. You know, I mean, I was gone. But I felt like, I'm not going to tell you where it went, Marion. It could be under your seat. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, somebody was watching me. <laughs> How am I going to continue after that? Where, where is it? It's right there. Uh, so anyway, Paul, okay, back to the story. I got to focus here. So Paul, right, can you imagine? All right, my boy, all he wanted to do was preach the gospel. All he wanted to do was tell people about this Jesus. And I mean, people, false witnesses came against him. He had been persecuted. You know the story. He's, Paul's, I mean, he has been through so many things. And now he's like, I'm a Roman citizen. I want to go see Caesar. And anyway, he gets in his boat. Basically, long story short, because it's 11 4 I'm trying to hurry. So he gets on the boat, and he gets everybody in the boat, and, and they off they go. But he tried to tell them not to go because the weather was not looking good, but nobody listened to him. Oh, uh, you don't have to look at your spouse right now, you know what I'm saying, but sometimes people don't listen to us. And they get on this boat, and they go out, and they reach a storm. They didn't see the sun, the moon, nothing for many days, and I'm sure there were some prayers going up like I prayed when that snake was looking at me. And he finally gets, they get shipwrecked to this island. And I can imagine if I was Paul, I'd be kissing the ground. <laughs> I'd be like, thank you, Jesus, I made it. And they get there, and all he wanted to do was just simply build a fire. I mean, all I can imagine that he wanted to do was simply relax, get a fire going because he was cold and probably hangry like I would be out in the middle of a sea, out in the middle of a storm. And so he gets there, but he didn't have time to think, I always feel like somebody's watching me because that viper, come on, came up when he was putting wood on the fire, the viper came out. I started thinking about that. I started thinking about the wood, and it represents humanity. And then I got looking at the, the fire, and it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And the closer Paul got to the fire, that's when the viper appeared. See, there's going to be some things in your life. The closer you get to the Holy Spirit, God is going to reveal some things in your life that you might not want to be, come on, you might not want it to come out. You might not want it to be revealed to you, but the closer you get to the fire and the closer you get to the presence of God, he will reveal some things in your life. That's what was happening. Oh, he revealed something all right. That viper came out and it locked itself up on Paul's arm and it got his, oh, come on, big teeth up on there and it didn't bite him and go away. It stayed there and it latched itself on him. You know, I got thinking about there's many people who are trying to desperately seek after God because you've been bit and you feel beaten today. You've been bit. You've had snakes come in your life. You've had people say things to you. Come on. You've had all kinds of things happen to you. And if you want to admit it or not, you still got them on you. They have latched on. I wonder how many people have come in here today with things latched up on you that you know you should have shook off a long time ago. Oh, look at your neighbor. Say, it getting quiet in here today. You've got some things latched on to you, and we keep carrying it around. And the closer you get to the Holy Spirit, the more you will see that you can't go all in for Christ if you letting the snakes come and biting you up and you holding on to it. Just this week alone, I wonder how many of you have had snakes come after you, people biting up on you, people voicing their opinion, people doing you wrong. Come on. Some of you have passed. You have things as a child, rejection that has taken place and that thing is still latched up on you and you wonder what's wrong with you but I want you to know that your rejection that really that's God's protection that's God's protection protecting you for something but you can't shake it off and it is latched up on you and some of you have come in here today don't act like you don't because we've all been there. We all have had it happen. We've allowed things to offend us, hurt us. We've gone through different things, and many of us have not yet fully surrendered it to God. We're not over it, so it lays on us, and we continue to, ke to keep it on us wherever we go. Paul didn't have time to think about nothing. That bad boy jumped up, jumped on him, and latched himself. 
Maybe even when you leave here, something's going to happen and latch up on you. But I want you to know this. we got to be careful because many of you are tired. <laughs> You're tired. You're tired. And a lot of times when we're tired, you know, it's because we're going through a storm. And sometimes the storms are long, and sometimes the storms are quick. But when you go through the storm, come on, and you've been praying, and you've been spending time on your knees, and you finally get that answer to prayer, and God finally gives you the victory that you've been looking for, and then we let our hair down and say, thank God. Well, now that I've been to Bible study, and I've been to prayer night for the last six months while the storm's going on, now that I've finally... I finally found the light, and Jesus finally came through for me. I can take some time off. I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to open the Word this week because, you know, I really was in it during that storm. And now that God's seen me through, I'll just put it down for a little while because I'm tired and I need to get some rest. And God's been good, and he's finally answered my prayer and, you know, and everything. And I've seen so many people like this. But I want you to be careful because when you get to that moment, when you get to that place where you're tired because you've just come out of the storm, you've experienced the victory, but you're still tired from the hell that you went through before. Come on, somebody. You have to be careful because it's in that moment when your guard is down that the enemy fights the most. Don't think that it's over so you can just push God off and push him off. And that's, oh, come on. And I feel like so many people are missing it. I've seen as a pastor, God bless people. Pour out on people, and then, boom, gone. She gone. He gone. Where you at? It ain't over yet. You got to keep getting on your knees. The enemy's going to come, and you're going to have storm after storm after storm, but you can't let your guard down. That's the first thing I want to do today. Don't and tell you this. Don't let your guard down after your victories. Paul, man, my boy was tired. Can you imagine? All the mess he went through before he even got on the boat. Then got on a boat out at sea. They tried. They wouldn't listen to him. He's sitting in there. He's like, shoo. And like, what is going on, right? He's in all these waters are getting rough, and he's calling out to God. He finally gets up on this island, realizes that he's in one piece. He's tired, and all he wanted to do was build a fire. He goes and builds a fire and gets it going, but see, his guard was down. And when he was on the fire, he didn't have time to talk to the snake. The snake came up, and it bit him and latched on to him. I want somebody to know today that there's a snake, come on, in your life right now. I know I get you, Miss Marianne. There's a snake going on right now in your life. Can you imagine? That thing bit, tried to bite him, and then what it did is it latched itself up on him. Why? Because his guard was down. Some of you, your guard has been down and things have happened in your life and the snake has bit you. That situation has grabbed a hold of you, has latched on beside of you. And I'm going to tell you something. Not only did he bite him, but he lingered on him. Can you imagine not only getting, man, I'm going to tell you what, how can you, you trying to run and the snake is still attached. I mean, bid him, held on to him. Some of you are held in situations in your life right now. The enemy has bit you. Come on. You've got snakes of all kinds. Some of you have been through divorce, right? Come on. And that snake has come and bit you. Come on. And you don't know how you're going to get through. It's still attached to you. And it's, it's over. But you still got it right here up on you. Your kids are misbehaving, been in and out of jail, whatever the case may be, and you walking in today with some snakes on you. Paul was bit. And when he was bit, you know what God did? God bit him in front of everybody. He could have let him be bitten by the snake, right, all by himself, but he didn't. He did it publicly for a reason, for a reason. And they saw that that snake bit him, and they were waiting for him to die. But God. See, sometimes you may feel bit. Number two, you might have been bit, but you were not beaten. You might still have some snakes locked up and attached to you. Come on, but you ain't dead yet. You're still standing. You might have had some things happen to you, and you might have tried to shake them off, but they are still there, but you still stand and you still worship it. They might have walked out on you, sprayed on you, as Pastor Tom used to say. They might have cussed you out, and come on up somebody and up down the next. But you know what? You're still standing. 
You might not have gotten that job you wanted. Someone else could have got it, and you were upset. But, hey, but you're still standing. It might still be on you, but you're still standing. Hey, your sons and daughters might have treated you bad and got all kinds of mess going on, but you're still standing. I want you to know people are looking at you and things have happened publicly because God wants you, wants them to know and wants you to know, hey, they might have seen it happen. You may feel bit, come on, but you're not beaten. I'm not done with you yet. Hey, they might be waiting for you to die. Some of you, things have happened. People are waiting for you to quit, but God. You may, may think, how in the world am I still standing? I might have snakes up all over me, but that's okay. You still are standing today. You are still worshiping. Come on, somebody, today. You're feeling better already. Why? Because you came in with this. Everybody's got this, and if we're not careful, we'll hold on for so long. It'll wear us down. You may feel beat up. You may feel as if it'll never work out, but God is saying, no, I did it publicly. I could have done it privately, but I did it publicly because I want you to realize who I am. And I want you to know they're waiting for you to fail, but I'm giving you what you need to succeed. And I want you to know whatever you're holding on to, whatever kind of situation, whatever kind of pain, come on. Whatever kind of thing that has happened to you, maybe it's something that God is revealing to you because you're getting closer and closer to him, and he's saying, no, no, you got to shake it off. Some of you got to shake the mess off, shake the conversations off, shake all the actions from others off, shake the hurt off. Hey, they might have overlooked you, but God did not. You've got to realize who you serve, and you've got to shake the thing off that you've latched on. How many of you know you got to shake it off? You got to shake it off. And Paul wasn't disobeying God. Paul was being obedient to God. He had passion. He was serving God. Anytime you have passion and you're serving God, sometimes you're going to get bit. Sometimes snakes are going to come out. Sometimes you're going to feel like somebody is watching you and you're going to have situations happen in your life, but you got to understand you may feel bitten, but you are not beaten. You are not beaten. It happened publicly, but he's still standing. That situation has almost got you down, but hey, you ain't dead yet. So Paul had a storm, a shipwreck. All these things were external, but once that snake got a hold of him, the venom got inside of him. Some of you, that's what's going on. You may look good externally, come on. You may look good, got your new clothes, got your hair did, got your nails done, lady, but deep down, you ain't looking good inside. Deep down, you're still carrying on to that snake that is lashed on to you. And they thought by looking at Paul that the storm didn't get you, Huh, the shipwreck didn't get you, but maybe the venom will get you. Maybe that will get inside of you. But it was the storm that gave him the faith to shake off the snake. There are people in this room who have been through so many storms, but don't you give up because of the snake. If the storm couldn't take you out, and if the shipwreck couldn't take you out, hey, then the snake ain't going to take you out. Paul was over by the fire, and he saw that the snake had not only bitten him, and people were waiting for him to die, and as it was lashed on to him, he had to get to the place that the more he was by the fire, and the more he was by the presence of God, it was revealing that it was time to shake the snake off. I wish I could have somebody praise God and lift your head up and put a smile on your face and know that you might have come in with this. You might have been bitten. You might be holding on to a bunch of baggage. But today, you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit saying to you, it is time to shake the bad up boy off. So that's what he did. He got in the fire, and the Holy Spirit was seeking, and he shook the thing off. God is saying to you today, It is time for you to shake off your past. It is time for you to shake off your hurt because what I got for you is better than any snake bite. What I got for you, you will be standing on the promises of God and you will be able to overcome any snake, anything that tries 
to come to stop you because God has an anointing and a power over your life. I believe that he's trying to reveal things to you even in this moment. One second, they thought he was a murderer. And that's why they thought that he was bit. That's why they realized, hey, if the storm couldn't kill him, now he's going to get bit by the snake. This surely will do it. And when the people sat and they waited for him to die, but he never did. Oh, come on. And they waited and they waited and they waited. And then at that point, they thought, okay, well, I guess if he's not going to die, he must be somebody. He must be a god of some kind. So they went to him, and, and they said, hey, hey, um, somebody's sick over here in the village. Can you come heal him? So one minute they thought he was a murderer. One minute they were looking because he was bit, and they thought he was going to die. And the next, the next minute they're realizing, hey, this, hey, this God ain't nothing going to shake him down. So we might as well use him. There must be something special about him. So I'm going to take him, and I'm going to send him over here to do something else. I want you to know that when you have been bit, that's where God uses you the most. Number three today. Where you have been bit is where God uses you the most. Somebody needs to hear that. I'm going to say it louder and louder. Point number three. Where you have been bit is where God uses you the most. You've been bit, God's going to use you. Here he was, he was bit in the same hand that he was bit on. Can you imagine the fang marks, right? That thing had grabbed a hold of him. Venom was coming all out of him. And here he was in a situation where they thought he was going to die, but he did not. He takes that same hand. Are y'all following me? The same hand where the snake came to try to knock him out. And he took that hand. And he goes over to the village, and they say, hey, we got somebody that needs to be healed. He could have done it any kind of way, but he took the hand, the hand where he was bit, and he placed it on the chief, and he prayed, and he was healed. God took the place where he was bit. God took the wound. Some of you, God wants to take the wound. He wants to take the pain. And he wants to use you in a way that will glorify him. And you can't see it right now because all you see is the venom. All you see is the hurt. All you see is the disappointment. All you see is the pain. But God is saying, no, I want to take that place where it hurt the most. That thing that looks impossible. That situation that does not look good. I want to take that thing and that thing. And I want you to go help somebody else. You think you're beaten. You think there's no hope. But God takes that situation and He uses it to help other people. So He heals Him. And the gospel message continues to spread. So the thing that they thought would kill Him did not. Some people here, you know, good and well that you've had bad experiences and things that have happened in your life that definitely could have killed you physically. Or maybe you're like Pastor Dana, emotionally it has about killed me. But I want you to know that you're not done yet. I want you to know that God wants to use you. God wants to bless you. But don't you let your guard down. God's like, hey, he might have blessed you. More than you ever thought, but don't you let your guard down. You got to get on your hands and knees like you ain't ever fought before, and you got to get ready for the fight because what God has for you is better than what a snake is trying to bite you up on. God wants to bless you. Will you stand to your feet today? I don't know where, where you've been bit. Maybe it's relationship issues. Maybe, maybe it's a situation in your past or in your marriage or whatever the case may be, but I want you to know today it's time that you shake it off. Will you say it with me? Shake it off you got to get rid of it because you can't grow in your walk with God and God can't use you. Now, I can't use you here at the church. I, I need you, but I can't. I, you got to let it go so you can experience everything that God has for you. How many of you would say today with every head bowed, I, every eye closed, Pastor Dana, I need prayer. I've been bit. I'm still dealing with the bite. Yep, yep, see hands up everywhere. Today, I want to invite you, if you want to come down right now, I invite you as the musicians play. I want, I want to invite you down this morning for prayer. If you, you've been hurt, come on down. Now's the time. I want to pray over you. Anybody today?
the people that raise your hand. You don't want to get up and get out of your seat and come give the devil a black eye this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as people come, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, you would help the ones that have been bit. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would you would touch the ones that have been hurt, the one that came in with something latched up around them. God, I pray right now, Lord, they would shake it off. I pray right now, Lord, that they wouldn't be able to go another day without realizing, God, that you are in control. And, Lord, you can heal any wound they might have because, Lord, we want to say, count me in. Lord, count me in, Lord. We want to be all in for you today. So, Lord, heal your people. Heal the pain in their life, God. The situations that they've gone through that they thought that it was over and that they couldn't do it anymore, Lord, they're not quitting. Today they're saying, God, I want you to use me. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us today. Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, everything that you've done in our life. God, we thank you for that today. Turn me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you heal my heart, change my name, forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. Savior, because you pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you heal my heart, change my name. Another one, I am free. I am free. I am free. Have lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Have lost another one. Savior, I thank God. 